Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I'm here with another C Sharp tutorial to you get that A in your coursework. And today we're here with editing a record. So, how does one edit a record? Well, if you've watched my Java tutorial, it's exactly the same way, with a slightly different syntax. Essentially, we open up the file and we write we, we read each line. If a line doesn't match the criteria to edit the record, we just write that line to a temporary file. We keep doing this for the whole file. If a line we read matches the edit's turn, then we will write the edited record to the file. And we will do this for the whole file because we need to obviously copy all data to the new file. Then we delete the old file and then rename the new file to whatever the old file was. To give the illusion we edited the, record, the file when in reality we actually just wrote everything apart from what we wanted to change to a different file. So let's get right into how we do that. So firstly, we've got a public static void method here, and it's called edit record. We're going to pass in string search term. Let's say we want to delete Bob's record, we'd pass in Bob. It's essentially the field, the data of a particular field we want to use to tell the program, right, delete this record, not edit this record, not delete. String file path, that's obviously the file where with the records we want to edit. Position of search term. Essentially, this means which field will the search term belong to. For instance, let's say we have ID, name, and age, and we want to edit the um, name. Well, it's not going to be one because one is the ID of a record. So it's going to be number two, which is the name. So this would pass in a two. This isn't required, but it just makes this code more versatile for more people, as this is very generic code which you can then build upon. Then we've got string field 1, string field 2, string field 3. Obviously, you can add in more if you want. At the start, we're going to have a few variables. We've got position of search term, minus, minus. Essentially, this makes the um, code slightly more user-friendly. Because we are manipulating arrays, we have to start on zero, but this will, is expected to pass in an integer which is one or higher because it's more logical to most people to pass in a one for the first position as opposed to a zero. So this just makes the library slightly more user friendly. String temp file, that's simply a file path for the temporary file. So temp.txt, very standard. And bool edited equals false. Essentially, once we edit a record, we don't want to edit any more records and we still have to look through the rest of the file because we're writing every record to the new file so we have to have an edited boolean so what's going on here well this is quite a bit of code to digest we have a try and a catch and essentially it is do a chunk of code if anything goes wrong execute what's in the exception code which prevents the program from crashing which is far more elegant so we've got console.write line, this program did an oopsie, and then throw new application exception, and this will just print the error message to help you with debugging. So in here we've got string array lines equals system.io.file read all lines. Essentially, this is going to read every line in the file and add it to an array. So each line will have its own array element. So naturally, with an array comes a for loop to manipulate that array. And we have for int i equals 0, i is less than lines.length and i++. This essentially means we are going to loop through every line in this string. So then we do string fields equals lines.i.split and then a comma. So this is a CSV file, which means each value in the file is separated with a comma. So essentially, let's say we've got a record on the screen right now. The id the name and the age are all separated by a comma so the program knows what separates the data. Because if we didn't have any commas, we might be able to tell what the ID, the name and the age are, but the computer wouldn't. So that's why we have a delimiter. And essentially we are passing in everything up until the comma and that gets put into one element of the field array. Then we do the same again. Everything up until the next comma gets put into its own field. So we've essentially got a little array element for each field, which makes it very easy to interact with each field of the record. Then we do if record doesn't match. 
And what we do is record matches is a function we created in a few tutorials ago. And essentially, we just check if a record matches. Please watch my reading file tutorial if you wish to know more about it. But this works. So if the records don't match, the exclamation mark means they don't match. Well, if the record doesn't match what we're trying to edit, then we don't want to actually edit that uh, record. So we're just going to write it to the temp file because we don't want to change it. So we do add record, which is a throwback to my how to write a record tutorial, which is also going to be up on the screen. Click the eye up there if you want to watch it. Very simple code. So you want to add a record and we pass in field zero, field one and field two, which we have gotten here, which is just the, the current line we're reading from the lines array. Now, let's say the, the record matches. We found a record that we want to edit. Simply, we do if not edited. Why? If we've already edited the record, we don't want to do it again. We only edit the first record we find, not all the records. So we do add record, and then we pass in field one, field two, and field three. These are the three parameters we passed in before as the values we want the new record to be. So we pass them in, print out, edited him, and set edited to true. And that's it for the for loop. After, after we've gone through the whole file and, writ and written every record to the new file, including the edited one if we had to edit something, we do delete old file. We just simply delete the file path file. And then we do rename. So we're going to rename our temp file, which is where everything is. And we're going to set it to whatever file path is, which is up here. To give the illusion we've edited the file when in reality, we've actually made a new one, killed the old file, and made the new one the name of the old one which we killed. And then we print record edited. So let's go in and see if this actually works. So if you go to your um, bin debug folder for your Visual Studio project, you will see this is where uh, text files and other files are stored by default if you're just referring to a file name for the file path. So we've got cake.txt and we've got some records in here. We've got ID, name, age. And let's say we want to change Violet's age to 15, which I believe is her age in most of the Violet's Evergarden anime. So that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to go, we're going to go to the top of the code to our main function and we're going to call in edit record. We're going to 2018 is going to be our search criteria. If the ID of a record matches 2018, we want to edit it. Cake.txt, number one, because it's the first field. 2018, we want to keep that the same. Violet, we want to keep that the same. But we want to change this to 15. We click save. Make sure to close the file you wish, the, you wish to edit a record in while you do the code. We're going to click play. edited him or her in this case record edited so it the code says it works let's check the file and it worked violet has now been put as 15 years old so guys that's been a quick tutorial be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed um if you struggled with anything in this i strongly recommend you watch the whole c sharp file handling series just four videos including this one and you'll know how to basically do all the uh, record handling you'll need to do to get an A in your A-level coursework. Uh, if you've got any requests, leave a comment down below. I will be doing more C-sharp tutorials, especially with validation. Thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.